In the upstate, though, there's a special tribute to Luke Perry. Fairway Outdoor Advertising put up a billboard on Lawrence Road at East Washington Street where it says, Rest Easy, Luke Perry. And we're going in depth, and you might be wondering if Luke Perry was too young to die from a stroke. And a lot of people are surprised by some of the answers. It's really getting a lot of a talk since his death. Yeah, it's raised a lot of awareness. The CDC says actually about 30%, really a third of all stroke patients are actually under the age of 65. And here in the South, the statistics are really the most alarming in the country. That map from the CDC shows the Southeast has the highest rates of death from stroke. You can see our region is shaded there in the dark purple. And while there are genetic factors that can lead to strokes, there are also many lifestyle choices you can make to reduce your risk. And right now we're heading to Prisma Health in Greenville. That's where Dr. Richard Turner standing by. He's a neurosurgeon there at the Stroke Center. So Dr. Turner, thanks uh, for joining us first off here. but. What is a stroke for people that might not know much about this and how does it affect a person? Because what we saw with Luke Perry, I mean, this massive stroke and then within days he lost his life. Yeah, there's a really actually two kinds of stroke. There's a kind of stroke that blocks off the blood flow to the brain. And then there's a kind of stroke where the artery in the brain actually ruptures and bleeds into the brain. But with both situations, when it's a happening, patients develop a sudden onset weakness, numbness, difficulty speaking in some cases. If it's an issue of bleeding in the brain, they may actually fall into a coma. So stroke is, in general is a disruption of the, of the blood flow to the brain. So, doctor, I was wondering, especially with Luke, um, with Luke's case, I feel like a lot of people have been talking about how young he is, that at 52 years old for him to lose his life. What about that? What about strokes affecting people under 65? What would the recovery typically be like? Because, of course, as Cody was just talking about, I mean, he lost his life in this case. I think it's scary to a lot of people. A absolutely. Um, Certainly the healthier you are going into a stroke um, and the sooner you can get it treated, the best chance you can have of a good outcome. But unfortunately, even of the youngest and healthiest people, there's still a one in four to one in five chance of that person losing their life to this disease. So it's a terrible, terrible disease. And particularly in the Southeast where stroke is so prevalent, we do see stroke in young people. We actually see it in children down here in the Southeast. and so. This isn't just a disease of, you know, my grandparents or somebody who's 80 years old. This really affects young people uh, in the southeast almost as much as it affects elderly. Dr. Turner, in your cases, what do you see that what is it that makes people in the southeast so much more prone to this disease? Is there one factor or is it just uh, many factors put together? I, I do think it's probably multifactorial. I think that while genetics plays a role, you know, in the southeast with the increased uh, use of smoking, uh, increase of diabetes, there are certain diseases like sickle cell anemia that affects our stroke numbers, sedentary lifestyle. There's a lot of things that play into why people have a stroke, but there's definitely a cluster in the southeast uh, for not only just increase in stroke itself, but the outcomes are the worst in the southeast. And so finally, I would ask, you know, you talked about some of the risk factors that are there, but what can someone do if they find that, yes, they do have family history of this, maybe they're a little overweight, what would you suggest they do right away to just begin uh, to lower their chances of having a stroke? Yeah, great question. I think the first thing to do is talk to your physician and understand what are your numbers. What is your blood pressure? What is, do you have diabetes? Do you not have diabetes? What is your resting heart rate? That's the first thing is understand what is it that you need to fix in your lifestyle. Then really it's, it's you got to get to work. While we can't do anything about genetic factors, there's a lot of lifestyle we can modify. Become more active. Eat well. Stop smoking. Um, you know, these are all things. Decrease our stress. Understand and really be diligent about our medications. All these things can really decrease a person's risk of stroke. Well, Dr. Turner, thanks so much. Again, a neurosurgeon there at Prisma Health. Thanks for joining us this afternoon, and uh, hopefully people will take this a little bit more seriously now. Yeah, very good advice. Thank you so much.